sort of been obsessed with music since high school, and um, I got into DJing, which led me into trying to find somewhere to buy great records. Mm -hmm. And so I started record shopping all over the place. And when I went to university in, uh, at Western in London, I started working at Dr. Disc there, which was uh, at the time was just a small, tiny little shop. It was about 85, I guess. And um, soon after, I became immersed in music, and it became a full-time job for me. And school was kind of put by the wayside, even though I did finish a degree. It took me a while, and then uh, the, got an opportunity to open the Hamilton store, and I've been here ever since. Discography is sort of a side project for me. I'd retired from DJing for about 17 years, and I got this idea to do this vinyl only, almost a, not a nostalgia night, but just drawing on DJing as more of an art form using records. I started this night with a partner of mine, his name is Andy Inglis, and he used to work here. And we uh, found a really interesting location called the Baltimore House on King William Street. And the interesting thing about Baltimore House, we didn't want to have this kind of nostalgic, I, nostalgia is the wrong word, it's more of a paying homage, I guess, to the form of the format of records, vinyl, and also a DJ using the vinyl. So we didn't want to have it in like a slick kind of Euro bar. So what we did was we looked around at the different venues in Hamilton and Baltimore House has this kind of Victorian feel to it. So we thought it would be a really nice environment to have discography and so that's where we started. I had a large collection and then when I sort of gave up DJing about 15, 17 years ago, um, I gave most of it up. So now that I'm back into DJing again, I find myself buying like through the store or even eBay or whatever, I'm buying it back. But for, for myself, uh, and people who use vinyl, it's like, if you don't have that record, you can't play it. So that's kind of, it's a limitation and a challenge, but it's also, uh, to me, it's somehow sort of more rewarding to um, have that physical item, I guess you'd say, the record. I think competition for us, I mean, we have to be competitive um, price-wise and selection-wise, otherwise we just don't make money and we cease to exist. So in that way, we have to stay competitive. In other words, like if there's, a new release out that's really popular, we have to stock it and make sure it's at a, at a you know, a equitable price point that's not way out of the marketplace. And um, as far as um, maybe a different take on the competition would be that we're more eclectic, I think. We, have, we stock a larger variety of music, which is sort of our niche in the market. Um, we thought the biggest way and the most Easy, the easiest way would be to for people to access us would be through music. So we've got a lower roof out back, so every art crawl between May through October, we host local only bands because we're really into promoting local music on the rooftops. And the music, because it's you know you can't really restrict the sound flow, it kind of flows over to James Street, and people as soon as they come up James and they cross the corner, they hear this music, and they're like what? And they look over and they feel these bands on the roof. So naturally, curiosity, and it's free. Right, they come over and take it out, check it out. So it's a great way to expose not only the bands but also get people to drag them almost physically over to the store. And you know, even though we've been here 20 some odd years, the uh, there are quite a few people that haven't, for whatever reason, haven't you know been to our store. And it's a great way, a great introduction to the shop.